Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. This is Dare to Dream podcast. We've been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award, as well as being listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. We're always grateful for the accolades so much. And I am a certified coach. I run a visibility hub. And specifically, what I do out in the world is I coach people on how to write a highly engaging book, both in groups as well as in private sessions. In addition, I take people's books to a guaranteed international best-selling status. I almost said author status, and I do all the heavy lifting for you. And the third piece of my visibility hub is learning and teaching how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts so you can get massive results like filling up workshops, selling books, having followers, and much more. All the things we want visibility to do for us. I have some free gifts for you. You can go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. There you'll find templates. You will find videos so you can learn right away how to become more visible out in the world right away. That's D-E-B-B-I. D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. I thank them both for the wonderful work they do out in the world that includes a lot of powerful energy shifts. If you would like to go to one of their classes online or in person, or if you would like to become a facilitator, Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. Today's episode is one I know that I'm looking forward to, and this is someone who is back now for a third time on the show, certainly not her last time. Susan Miller is here, and she's a world renowned expert, and she's going to be discussing astrology and your year ahead. I think this year, more than any other, we're all hungry to know that. Susan Miller is a true pioneer of the internet with Astrology Zone, celebrating 26 years on the internet. On December 14th, 1995, Astrology Zone launched with Pathfinder for Time, Inc. And then it was invited by Disney to appear on the Go.com Followed by abc.news for Walt Disney, followed by Susan running her own award-winning site independently, where she has been ever since. And you can follow and chat with Susan Miller on Twitter. Go to her handle, which is Astrology Zone. And I highly recommend that you order her astrology calendar, which is spectacular. I've got mine, it's hanging on the wall. It's right over here. So I won't be able to show it to you, but trust me, it's a work of art with a lot of fine astrology information. I've had one for several years and I don't live without it. You can get one too by going to astrologyzone.com. That's astrologyzone.com and get this year's astrology calendar. And with that, I welcome the beautiful Susan Miller to Dare to Dream. Great to have you. Thank you. I have to say our calendar is all sold out. I was on Good Day New York and the host was raving. And I first came out with my self-published calendar in September. It takes five months to write. And they all just, uh, the, 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 I wrote uh, a lot and I printed thousands on archival paper and hired the best artist. They all flew out the door. I'm working on 2023. But for people who are disappointed, Mm -hmm. I have a solution. <laughs> I, I took all the information because I write on the days that are important and I put it on the premium portion of my app, uh, which is called, it's a long name, Daily Horoscope Astrology Zone by Susan Miller. But if you just search Susan Miller on Apple or Google Play, you can get my app, you get it for free first, but that portion is not on there. It's the premium portion, which is a dollar a week. It's $4.99 a month and people love it. And you can, you can pick the right day for your interview and so forth. Of course, I write 72 words a day on the premium and I really give you a, a sense of every single day, 365 days a year, every single sign. 
and the and it, I include the monthly on the free and the paid app. It's the same, uncut, same as the internet. Forty thousand words divided by twelve signs. <laughs> My fingers need little pillows. <laughs> I read a lot. <laughs> well, what a good problem to have! I'm so proud of you. That's really something to claim when you can say something that is really, it is a beautiful work of art and it's got a lot of great detail for people who love astrology. So I, I enjoy doing it so much. And I work with a French fashion mm. artist. You know, it's funny. I know I have 40% male readers, but women buy calendars, men don't. They want digital on their phone. So in this way, I'm serving both. Men tend not not to buy paper calendars you hang on the wall, but I think we need it if we're doing a, a, an anniversary party or a baby shower or our own wedding or whatever. Uh, we need to look ahead and it's so much easier with a piece of paper to keep looking through. And because we knew women buy calendars, I let rip, and, you know, I'm kind of girly. And I, I just wanted to do a fashion-y kind of beautiful French calendar. People who are curious, you can look on my website. There's a picture of four girls. That's the calendar, all ethnicities. And uh, you can see some of the artwork that, you know, when you're switched to the other page. And I just have a lot of fun doing it. I like to make things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I have both. I'm somebody who needs both. Something on my phone and I, I'm visually i have to see a calendar i have to look at a month me too i'm the same way you are i i'm totally the same mm. but guys tell me oh no i don't i don't do that and i'm like wow our brains are really wired differently you know mm. <laughs> well then they have to see the calendar first they might change their mind just saying <laughs> i so do have let's guy telling me they like it. Actually, we read every letter that comes into astrology zone. Hmm. Actually, because I write so much, my assistant calls me at 5 p.m. and she reads me the letters that have come in. And it's kind of nice to just sit back and listen. And then I tell her what I'd like to say. And it gives my hands a rest because after I eat dinner, which I love to cook, so I make something interesting. And then I go back to work all night. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, well, I've, I've always been a bit obsessed about writing. And it was funny, I was watching TV once, oh, well, all the time, you know, I was watching the news and Stephen King was on. And they say, you're so prolific, you're writing so many books, Stephen. He said, I'm obsessed. Mm -hmm. Even when I go to someone's house and sleep over, you know, if I'm invited like to the country, I have to write. And I'm like, oh my God, that's me too. I don't have a choice. My fingers need it. it. I can't explain it, but there's an obsession. And I'm grateful that God gave me the ability to write. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't major in English. I majored in business mm. because my father said I'd always work. I had not gone to high school. I had done homeschool. I didn't attend high school because I was so very sick. People who know me know that I was born with the birth defect and I bleed internally at a horrific rate. Mm -hmm. And when they, they didn't know what was wrong with me, why I was in so much pain and it would come. And then if I laid very, very, very still in eight weeks, it would go away. So the doctors thought I was making the whole thing up because they'd never heard anything weird like that. But when the chief of staff went in when I was 14, my mother waited. She was an astrologer and she knew at 14, it would go away. Well, it did, but I was in the hospital a year. In my life, I've had 40 blood transfusions. They, fought, they knew what was wrong once they went in and it was horrific and they had never seen anything like this. But they fixed me. I don't have any more... Um, well, I had one this summer. <laughs> I fell in a garage on my bad leg and I tumbled like a little doll sideways and I couldn't move after that. I was like in blinding pain and I had to hire a nurse in my house because the, the hospital said there's nothing we can do for you. Mother Nature is going to take the blood back and keep all of those red cells because it takes eight weeks to make a blood cell but only three weeks to make more blood if mother nature saves it. And she's very conservative that way. 
and I had sprained all the tendons, but I didn't break anything. Thank goodness. So I've had quite a year. <laughs> um, also, my former husband died this year. And hmm. even though we were divorced, we were close. Neither one of us married again. And he had Parkinson's and the medicine was doing great. And then all of a sudden it didn't work anymore. And two months later, he was gone. It was a shock to me and the kids. So, you know, I'm still feeling sad that that's how the end of his life worked out. It, I feel it was unfair. He was a good person. Yeah. He just uh, didn't work a lot. He was depressed. And so the, the church actually, I'm Catholic, told me to at least separate from him or get divorced but we still stayed friends we were always together because my f older child has a little boy <laughs> and we both enjoy little Otis so much and now my other daughter is going to have a baby uh, next month so I love children and I love little children you know I love them all I don't care yeah. how old they are that's so, so amazing much. you're the second person I'm hearing who is experiencing a significant loss and at the same time as that loss the baby coming in and it seems do you somehow want to hear something synchronicity really if you want to hear something eerie near the end there don had a convulsion and they sent him from the rehab center they were trying to teach him to walk again and he couldn't swallow he could only have uh, like milkshakes or smoothies so they sent him to Lenox Hill Hospital and he was unconscious and the girls were with him and they played softly his favorite music like Louis Armstrong he liked jazz and Diana is a music producer she's actually the music producer for James Corden for CBS so she made mixes for him so they quietly played that and spoke quietly to him even though he was unconscious but my priest said he might be able to hear, you know, because hearing is the last sense you lose. And she got a phone call while she was in the hospital that day. It was only one day that he was totally unconscious. And um, it was that she had three viable eggs with IVF and that they were all boys <laughs> and that they were going to pick the strongest one and that she was going to have a baby. And that was six hours before he died. I also called her up and I said, Diana, when, when did they do the IVF finally? Because he died on May 1st. She said, don't you remember? It was grandma's birthday. My little mom, June 15th is when they did the procedure. And now she's, she's going into her ninth month. She's going to give birth in February. So both people that were important to her are factored into this equation. Ah, oh, this is a blessed baby. I love that. And I don't that. think there's a coincidence. Yes. He's going to come into such a loving family. <laughs> so there's a lot of people out there listening who are like, I also had a really rough, let's be honest, two years. And oh, a lot yeah. of people wondering, is this going to be any better? Here we are at yes. the start of 2022. And you say yes. So tell me more. You know, I didn't write the year ahead for 2020 or 21. I knew they were going to be tough years. And I thought, I'm just going to be quiet. I need a rest. And I don't want to talk about a year that's going to be challenging. Because sometimes when you tell someone it's going to be challenging, it's even worse because now they're worried. You know, we, in the hospital, when I was there, and I always shared a room with two other ladies who were getting horrific operations, we always said anticipation is worse than realization. That was our motto. And these women were in for, I was in the hospital for joint diseases, which is bones. See, they thought my problem was bone and it turned out to be cardiovascular. But so I saw all these spinal operations, hip replacements, you know, big deal operations. But we always said the anticipation was worse than realization. You can get through it. You can, you can get through almost anything, um, but some things are much, much harder than others. And I would say losing someone or my, my assistant lost her cat of 13 years. She needed to take a week off. She was so upset. She loved that little kitty so much. Uh, the, the little cat was 13 years old 
And uh, I understand that, you know, so with death, you have to take time to process it because it's almost always a shock and, and never easy to bear. I once read that love, grief is the price we pay for great love. But in my church, they have a saying over the altar, uh, blessed are those who grieve because they will be comforted. Mm -hmm. And I always remember that it was over the top and, uh, you know, and uh, that gave me hope too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I, when I was having such a hard time dealing with lo losing a little mom in 2012, I said to myself, what would she say to me today? And I know what she'd say try something new susan and that's just when videos were becoming uh, prominent like uh, uh the, i was doing a partnership with fresh the skincare company and they were saying could you do a whole series of uh videos for us and i'm like okay this is what mom's talking about you know and and i did a tv show and it is good to do something new learn something new, do something new, go somewhere new, make a new friend, do something new. And, and it, I feel it distracts you for a while from the pain and that helps. And if you're proud of what you're doing, that, that helps. And, um, but if your listeners have any thoughts that they can contribute, I'm all ears. Oh, because I've never talked about grief mm. and I realize that's a big hole in my my body of work because we should know how to deal with it and I've read articles like in goof that would totally didn't help at all so I want to know if someone had something that really helped them deal with the grief and luckily I don't have regrets if you have regrets about a person if Maybe you had a fight with them right before they died or something like that. That's harder. Luckily, I didn't have that. I, it was always warm. And I had taken my mother on trips with me because she wanted to see Los Angeles. She wanted to see lemons and grapefruits growing on a tree. And I showed her and, and my publicist said, hey, come in my car. I'll drive you around. I'll show her the sign. You know, we all went together. We had a lot of fun and we laughed the whole time. And then my children said, let's take grandma to Disney World. We did that in Florida. I, I just, we took her place. I took her to astrological conferences. And she's the one that taught me. So take your mom somewhere while you still have her and while you can still enjoy her and you can still laugh together and have fun because those this. memories warm your heart. Okay. They, they warm mine. I have heard that this is a year like an RE kind of year of reevaluating. So I'd like you to weigh in on this and the the truth of it or not. No, I think I think the past two years were about endings. Mm -hmm. uh, not the beginning of 2020. <laughs> the year was cut like on a piece of Italian bread. The first three months were great, but after March 20th, it was like a fairy tale. Mm -hmm like in the fairy tale the princess goes to sleep and the, and there's a dinner downstairs and somebody's pouring wine and it it freezes in space yes. and another waiter drops a tray and that freezes in space and people eating and uh i felt like the whole world went into deep freeze and then we were sent home to reflect and That's think great. about our lives yeah. that's why i think we have the great resignation because some people said, this isn't how I want to use my time on earth. I want to use it differently. And whenever you break the chain of a uh, of routine, it's very good for you, even though we hate it. Yeah. We, don't, we don't like to lose a job or break up from a boyfriend or girlfriend or, or, or to have our landlord say we have to move. But whenever we break the chain of something we're used to, it forces us to try something new. And actually, often we find that we go to something better. There was a reason that ended. Everything has a shelf life. Um, you know, your, um, your time in your apartment, your, uh, you know, your relationship with a certain client, you know, things change. So 
you know, you have to be flexible. We don't have much of a choice. <laughs> and so no, you but think I 2022 think... then is also going to be a time of reevaluating relationships, career, and so forth going forward? Well, that for more stability. Somewhat, but I think people are coming to conclusions now. Mm. I, I love this year because it has so many lucky breaks. You know, when I write the calendar, and I've been writing them for 12 years, I look into the poor of every day of the year. So I'm really looking. And when I looked at 21, I was like, whoa, there are no little sparkling days, no little shots in the arm to give us optimism or a lucky break. Everything was hard. There were three monster moons, April 26th, one was uh, a new moon on November 4th, which was very difficult. And then there was a very difficult new moon on, on August 4th. And new moons have a long tail. They follow you around for about three months, sometimes as much as six, but until you straighten out that situation and then you can move on. Mm. But, you know, this year, oh, I love this year. All right, it starts out slow. Venus is retrograde. Okay, no Botox, no fillers. <laughs> <laughs> I know in LA, and you're in LA, people love to know that because the girls look so beautiful, they go in you. Know? And uh, so you don't do that until February, after February 4th. Venus will go direct on January 29th, but Mercury is retrograde, which is the planet of intellect and communication and electronics. Mm -hmm. And if you find that you're walking up and down staircase right now, that your software isn't being inserted properly, your computer's giving you trouble, um, you can't find the item you want in, in the Apple store because <laughs> of a supply chain problem. This is all Mercury retrograde. Just wait, you shouldn't be buying electronics right now. Anyway, so January has a slow start, but isn't that nice? Because yes. I don't know about you, but Christmas is strenuous. I put up a seven foot tree. I cooked a prime rib, beautiful roast beef for my uh, little family and took all the china out and polished up the silver and ordered flowers. And, you know, it was, uh, and presents. And uh, my mother used to wrap presents so beautifully with little pieces of holly, little candy canes. I did all that with the beautiful bows and, you know, it looks like a professional, like somebody in Bloomingdale's did it. And um, I wanted to make it special because last year, uh, my daughter in LA couldn't come home because Dr. Fauci was saying, do not travel. So we didn't see her for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Usually she comes home for Christmas because traveling two times with two heavily trafficked holidays is just too much. So she usually comes home for Christmas. And so this year she was coming home and my other daughter's little boy uh, was five. And that's when you start to remember Santa Claus and the tree. And I wanted it as big as the nutcracker tree. So um, I really worked hard, but now I'm really happy that it's a slightly boring January. <laughs> it's quiet and you can go back to normal life, you know. And we have something to look forward to next month. We have Valentine's Day. And this year, Valentine's Day is sweet as sugar. Mm. because Venus and Mars are going to be together on the 16th. You will already start feeling it ahead of time. Now, Valentine's Day falls on a Monday. Some people will celebrate over the weekend. Some people will celebrate on that Monday. There's a full moon on the 16th that is just a peach. It's just gorgeous. And the 17th has Jupiter and Uranus in a, in a beautiful conversation with each other. Uranus is the planet of surprise. Jupiter is the giver of gifts and love. We love it when they get together, which is the only time this year they will be speaking. And uh, that gives hope and optimism, lucky breaks, sudden surprises. We love it. Um, then uh, March 2nd, a new moon that is made in heaven. It is conjunct Jupiter. And just later in that week, on March 5th, we have Jupiter conjunct the sun, the luckiest day of the year. It falls on a Saturday. I will be telling people where that falls in their chart. And 
and you should try something hard, like a, an interview with a company you don't think you can get into or an application to a college that you think, oh, they'll never give me a scholarship or financial aid, or they'll never let me in. Try. Jupiter is the planet of miracles, not only good mm, fortune. I love and the then you have miracles. Them. Yes. And even the 16th, lovely uh, full moon. Mm. And then we've got, um, oh, major. Anybody in the arts, but we're all going to benefit because we all love the arts. Um, on April 12th, Neptune. Oh my gosh, I cannot talk. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. April I should have put all of those on calls. <clears throat> I'm on pins and needles here. <clears throat> well, on. I'm just going to get rid of all of these. They're all on hold. Nobody can reach me. Um, Neptune rules Pisces, and it and this conjunction is in Pisces. Okay. Jupiter used to rule Pisces. Not any. Well, yes, now too. The ancient ruler of Pisces was Jupiter. The modern ruler is Neptune. Modern astrologers look at both okay. to predict for Pisces. Now, Pis Pisces is an artistic sign to begin with. It's considered the most uh, artistic and imaginative sign because it rules the subconscious. So if you ask a, a Pisces designer or a uh, artist or musician, where did you get the idea for that song, for that painting, for that beautiful collection of clothing? They'll look at you and they'll say, I don't know. Well, they pick up so much in the world, in their mind subconsciously, and they're putting the bits and pieces together. Jupiter and Neptune meet every 13 years, but they will not meet in Pisces until 2133. We will never have this aspect again in our lifetime. Now, here's what I think about this. All of us went through the pandemic together. We all had feelings about it. Some people found they could do things they couldn't do before. Like I became a really good cook, like a serious home cook. But other people felt anxious. If they lost their job, of course they felt anxious. Or if they ran a restaurant or worked in a restaurant that was super stressful i mean so everybody had a different experience and i've always worked at home i've never worked anywhere else this is my home office so um i'm lucky because i wasn't having to adjust to something foreign and new and my staff always worked at home some are in la some are in florida some are in Brooklyn, they're all over the map. And, uh, and my assistant was afraid of the subway. So we only converse by phone. If I brought her in, it would cost me $150 by Uber. So I did, I did it a few times, but I didn't do it a lot. But now that we've all had this common experience all over the world, because I write for Vogue Japan and W Korea and um, Amica Italy and S Moda Spain and um, Claudia Brazil. All the editors were going through the same thing. They were all working out of their house. Even, even my daughter in LA on CBS, they were doing the show out of their apartments. No one thought that was possible, they did it. Now the art will take the thread from that experience and and people will be writing novels and screenplays music and 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 theatrical performances fashion food everything will be influenced by what we've gone through and that meeting of jupiter and neptune don't think of it as a day think of it as a conjunction which is the most uh, powerful of all uh, astrological aspects, the conjunction. Think of two hands on a clock at 12 o'clock. And then when it goes to the two, that's a sextile that your project, whatever you started, becomes better. But then when it comes on the three, that's a square. 
it's squaring one of the hands and you have to fix the weak points of your venture. But if you do, it goes to the four and that's a heavenly trine, 120 degrees, you can't get any better. Then it proceeds, this takes weeks, months, sometimes years, goes all the way down to the sixth. That's an opposition, but an opposition isn't always a dispute. Sometimes it is. It could be in a relationship where sometimes it's two halves of the apple coming together to make a whole. It's a completion aspect. So I think by the end of 2022, we will start to see the template of the times blossoming. Uh, it will take some time, but that will be the trigger, the meeting of these two powerful planets, outer planets. And, uh, you know, I looked at the Spanish flu. It was over in the middle of 2020, it took two and a half years. And look what happened, the roaring 20s, the beautiful clothes, the Art Deco architecture that rippled into jewelry and into the fashion too. Uh, the, the books, the literature, F. Scott Fitzgerald. I mean, it was such a time of exuberance and joy that people could go out again and they didn't even have a vaccine. I think we will be stuck with this virus forever. Like I Googled, when did the Spanish flu end? And Google wrote, never. The seasonal flu where you get your shot in September is the Spanish flu. They had to stop calling it the Spanish flu because it's not from Spain. It was started in Kansas. In America, that, that was a misnomer. So they had to stop that. But, uh, you know. So you we, think we never, it's, it's not going away, but at the same time, you see, I've heard that the pandemic is going to become an endemic, meaning yeah. it will not have the severity that no. Omicron We're is showing that it's losing it. its veracity and that yeah. the fact that it's so contagious, I have it right now. And I'm you have so, COVID right now. Oh I do. Gosh. Oh, you could have you could have put no. me <laughs> I'm so I'm functional. I'm very tired, but I'm a very healthy person. And let me I sleep. I'm taking great care of myself. It too shall pass. I'm actually in a way, look, I'm grateful for everything. But they say when you get this version, whether you're vaccinated or not doesn't matter. The fact is your immune system now can combat it going forward. And this- No, but I think it does matter to get the vaccine. I've got all three. Yeah. Well, it whatever the matter. beliefs are, <clears throat> the point is that the COVID is starting to die and it's showing that, and that people's health is actually starting to combat it. And these, they say, the scientists, this is very good for us. This shows it bodes well for this ending. You know what it is, though, uh, like uh, President Biden said tonight on television, that uh, we have to get even more vaccines to other parts of the world because those people travel, too. Yeah. And they, the poor countries can't afford to make a vaccine. And uh, we've already given out millions upon millions, I think 150 million for to poor countries. But we have to he said, let's we do we need to do more. So we are. Yeah. They're also um, putting together so, yeah, just an add-on. He's also, Biden yeah. is also getting very specific face masks to send out because they say that the face masks- most Well, the N95s, masks. I like the KN95s that you get on Amazon. That's it. Yep. You can breathe better, much better. It's like night and day and it's a different material. And um, I found something out too. If you put perfume on, on your neck, your chest, when you put the mask on, it floats up and you feel like you're in this <laughs> heavenly garden. And of course it's freezing here in New York where I live, you know, I, I mean, it's so bitter cold and the wind whips around the tall buildings and it's a force is a wind tunnel, but you have that mask on and you're in this little quiet garden. <laughs> So I found a way to like masks because I have trouble with my nose. I'm a mouth breather <laughs> and one side doesn't work. They even found that when they gave me the test, they said one side doesn't work for you. 
do you have only one side of your nose? I said, yeah, I have a half a nose. So, <laughs> so I, I, I learned to live with it. It's okay. <laughs> and what do we see then through the end of the year? Are there other mercury retrogrades? Well, there, we be the spectacular of? aspects are the first of February, March, April, May. Uh, May 3rd is interesting. Jupiter and Pluto will be talking to each other. And I know the pundits said, oh, well, the economy is going to be terrible. No, it's not. Jupiter, Pluto pumps up the economy. Now, in 2020, Jupiter and Pluto were making a conjunction. And I thought 2020 would be a year of great financial gain, that there would be bigger financial deals than we had ever seen before. Well, that did come to pass, but that was all the stimulus money <laughs> that the government sent out. And I was curious, I asked my editors in different countries, did your governments send money to people? They said, oh, absolutely. Every government was doing it. Uh, but I still think this year, May 3rd, it's going to reach a pinnacle point. It can't stay that high. A few weeks later, it starts wobbling down and not, it just goes to normal. It doesn't go into the depths of depression or anything like that. I just think we'll have a good financial year. And because Jupiter goes into Aries on the 10th of May, all the way until October 30th. So think Mother's Day to Halloween. You're gonna see a lot of companies starting up. Aries is the sign of the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And if you are an Aries, whoa, you have your Emerald Gear. Pisces gets it first, we have to share. So they have it now until May 10th. Then Aries gets their wonderful emerald deer. And they have to know what they want. If you don't know what you want, it's hard to get what you want. <laughs> I know that sounds so crazy, but it's true. You need to know what you hope will happen by this time next year. Okay, because we're early in the year. What do you want to accomplish this year? What do you want to hold in your hand by the end of the year? And the universe will help you, everybody. And then you say, why? Pisces and Aries, they're the lucky ones, yes. But when Jupiter's in a water sign, it helps Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and the Earth, because water and Earth make flowers, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. When it goes into Aries, it helps Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, but also the air signs because air and fire, you know, air makes fire burn more brightly. That's Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Everybody gets chocolates this year. <laughs> now, there's one thing that worries me a little bit. Uh, well, it's good and bad. <laughs> Jupe, uh, Mars. Mars is the planet that teaches us to compete well and, and gives us energy and drive and has us do things that are hard to do, that require some courage. Mars goes into Gemini, August 20th. And it's staying not the usual six weeks, but seven months. Now, having Mars in your sign is like having 20 cups of coffee a day. Whoa, it's like high octane. Why is it staying so long? It's staying long because it's going to retrograde. And Mars retrograde is not great for product placement on the market. And that's why I think supply chain problems are coming back. And he here's when it goes retrograde. Mars is strong in August and September, but September has Mercury retrograde almost all month. So there's annoying things going on. It's good at the beginning of October, first half, but it's already starting to get tired, just like people. He starts to get a little tired. By the end of October, he's retrograde. Stays retrograde until January 12th. Mamma mia, that's November, December, half of January. But Mars will stay in Gemini until March 28th. 
So the Gemini will not feel, oh, I'm getting cheated the whole time he's sleeping on the couch. Well, no, when he wakes up, he needs a little time to ramp up, just like people. Like I sit next to Mars, I'm like, Mars, wake up, wake up, wake up, Mars. No, no, I'm tired. Um, it's January 20, 12th, you're waking up. How about I make you lunch and I'll make you some coffee? Okay, that's a good idea. So it takes them a few weeks to get super strong. But you have February and March to really move ahead, Gemini, and everybody. But here's what I want to say to people. If you're launching something like a new book or going to present a screenplay to a studio or trying to start a Broadway show or I don't know, everybody loves your cookies and you want to sell them to Whole Foods because they're, they're all made with safe ingredients and really good things. You got to get it out by, uh, I would say by July, August would be the best. September has Mercury retrograde. If you can't get your product out by then, the first, first 10 days of October, then the door slams shut. If you say, well, why? I mean, how do you know this? When Mars is healthy, it takes him two days to go one degree. That's, that's his orbit. That's how long it takes him to move forward. When he retrogrades, it takes 12 days to go one degree. Now he speeds up a little bit in the middle of the retrograde, but at that point, by November, he's taking eight days to go one degree, which is still four times longer than two days to go one degree. So I say, get your product done early in the year. Make your big moves early in the year because that's when you're gonna be the luckiest, you know? So do you want me to go through all the signs to say what's coming for, you know, the main area of where the golden nuggets lie? Oh yeah, where I would absolutely love that. I know folks oh, okay. who listen would too. What sign are you, uh, Debbie? I am a Cancerian with a Scorpio moon and a Leo rising and my career- Oh, that's is, so lovely. My career is okay. in uh, Aries and my love life is in Gemini. <laughs> If your moon is in Aries, are you born at night or when the sun is still out? I was born in New York at 8.47 a.m. Oh, so you're, you're a morning person. I want to tell people I have discovered something. If you're born at night, the moon takes on special significance, sometimes even more than the sun. And the Vedic astrologers in India have figured that out. And so I started testing that. Mm -hmm. And I saw it with my daughter. She's a Pisces. She married Leo, who is a Leo. Can you imagine? She married a man named Leo. This is so funny. And he is a Leo. But he, he has Leo planets. And I thought, will her water put out his fire? No, because she's born at night. She has the moon in Aquarius. She has Venus there. She has Mercury there. Those Aquarian planets are super strong, which is why they're such a cute couple. So that's why people can't say, oh, I can't, I can't even date a Leo because they wouldn't get along with my Pisces. No, astrology is not a cookbook and, and a seasoned astrologer should help you because I think anybody can get along with any other sign. Some people like the slight tension, the dynamic, you know, um, tension between another person. Some people want it smooth, but, you know, I, I think anybody can get along with anybody else with a little effort. But anyway, let's start. I always start with Aries. Aries is the bud, the beginning of spring. Aries, it's a quiet start to this year. But if you need an operation, some kind of procedure, your elbow's been bothering you, or you have, you know, whatever, you have a bunion and your doctor said, you really should get this operated on. It's not gonna get any better. It's actually gonna get worse. You know, the first four and a half months is when to do it. Also, if you have cell text, just you're so lucky because now there's teleconferences. You can talk to a, um, a professional therapist on your computer. And, you know, it could be a half an hour, an hour every week. You could get a new perspective. And how wonderful before you enter your emerald year, May 10th to the end of October. And then it comes back. 
after December 20th this year, you get more help from Jupiter and it goes all the way into 2023. So you've won the jackpot. Aries, Jupiter is moving fast. You're getting the cornucopia. When you have Jupiter in your sign, it is the best possible place for love. So if you say, oh, I just can't meet anyone. Well, watch who comes into your life now. Uh, it, well, not exactly now. We have to wait until May. But during that, that Emerald Year period, because you will meet many new people, not just um, a romantic partner, but many people and of high level who will want to help you. Career, money, health, everything, travel, everything shines for you next year, this year, actually, this year and next year. And Pisces, listen to this because you have it now. I love the next coming months. And I want you to think back. What happened to you last year in 21? Because you had Jupiter dip his toe in your sign for just a short period from May 28th to July 28th. But Jupiter went retrograde on June 20th. I even called my daughter and I said, I know you're Aries but you have Venus in, in Pisces. That's why she's in the music business because that's a very nice place for the arts. And I said, does something special happen? She said, that's when the procedure was where I got pregnant. So you think back, sometimes we can't remember what we did. So you look at photographs you took around that time or look at your email. See if something special happened. But Pisces, this is your time. And your imagination is going to be sparked at a very high degree. So I want you to continue to work on your creative projects. Even if you're an accountant, if you love photography or film, or you love to cook, or you love to sew and make things, whatever it is you love to make or, or, or book, maybe you wanted to write a book. You, I'd want you to devote yourself to creativity, especially this year. Because what you create in the beginning, when Jupiter goes into Aries, you're going to make money. Pisces is going to make so much money. Aries, you will too, but you have to wait until the second half of 23. All right, now, Gemini, oh, Taurus. Taurus, you had a good career year last, this past year. Yeah, you, you made some solid gains. You impressed the powers to be. This year, it's going to be less pressure more friendships keep keep making new friends also go on social media maybe try a new social media like clubhouse something you haven't tried because clubhouse is audio you might like it no typing <laughs> um i like twitter and instagram and clubhouse those are my favorites and i'm at astrology zone on all of them so i hope you'll join me on them because i i remind you of special days i go on there um so Taurus, this is a year about friendship and your friends helping you. Also, the ancients called the 11th house where Jupiter is going, the house of joy, where you one special wish that you've held on to for a long time comes true. It could be material, like I hope we can buy a house, you know, we're trying to save up the money, or it could be spiritual. For me, after I had Chrissy, the doctor told me I couldn't have any more children because I was in the hospital with transfusions and I came home in a wheelchair for four months. And they said, are you crazy? You can't have any more kids. And I had Diana when I had Jupiter in the 11th house when you were going to have it. Miracles, miracles, okay? And I'm still here. I said, you may not be. And I still went ahead with it because I always wanted two children. So I know I can't have three, so I stopped. <laughs> I mean, at some point, you have to be practical. But anyway, Taurus, you got that. I would like you to even join a club, professional, social, any kind of club, or a club devoted to your interests, like an astrological club, like the National Council for Geocosmic Research or the International Society of Astrological Research. I belong to both. 
it's really fun. You get newsletters, you get virtual meetings. And actually ISAR, the international, that's the one I'm accredited from, uh, is having a meeting outside of Denver in, a, in a, a town right outside of Denver this August. So if, if the pandemic is died down, I'm gonna go to it because I miss those conventions. Uh, Gemini, this is your jackpot year for honors, awards, achievement, fame. Your career is on fire and you will see it right away, February, March, April, especially March. Something good will happen. And, uh, and then you will be socializing more in the middle of the year. And then at the end of the year, Jupiter is gonna give you another shot and December is going to be deliriously good. Cancer, you have luck from foreign people, foreign places. Okay, however that translates. You also have luck with the college market or going back to college. Uh, you know, some people have said, well, I can't get a job, I'm gonna go back to school. Great idea. Education is the one thing that can put you in a whole new category. Some people are getting their Bachelor of Science, uh, undergraduate degree, any degree, some are going for graduate. Other people say, I don't wanna do remote learning. It's not the same as attending college. I, I get it. And so you might uh, be able to uh, get some kind of interesting job in publishing or broadcasting because that house that's so lit up, the ninth house, where Jupiter is going to be spending time uh, rules publishing and broadcasting. It's the first part of the year, the first four and a half months. Then Jupiter goes into your house of fame and everything you've put together all these years for a decade, everything comes to a pinnacle point, a big, beautiful box with a big red bow. And what date is that? What date? Yeah, that for happens the from May until end of October for cancer, yes. Okay, beautiful. So you should enter contests. Um, it's high profile. You haven't had this for 11 years. You've got a little bit more to go, a few more months until you hit it. But everything you've been doing will come to fruition at that point. Well, not everything, but things that you're passionate about will come to fruition at that time. Awesome. Now, Leo, Leo is learning to dance with their partner without stepping on their toes. You have Saturn in the uh, <laughs> seventh house. So you're learning about the give and take of partnership, but you have Jupiter in the house of money. Something you invested in is going to pay off. Now you say, well, I don't have any stocks. Maybe, you know, some people don't. Well, you should though, actually, because if you contributed to your, what they call your retirement account, it comes right off your taxes. So instead of paying a big bundle of taxes, you pay less because they give you a credit for putting money away. But let's say you don't, let's say you didn't know that. And so you'll do it this time. You might've invested in your education or in your child or in a house. Whatever you invested in is going to start to pay off big time. And this is gonna be one of your biggest financial years. And then after that, the foreign people come back into Leo's life. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes you're working with a foreign person or a company and you don't even know it. Like I had that aspect once. And I said, well, that's not happening for me. I don't have any foreign people in my life that are giving me a job. Not realizing when Hachette called me to write for Elle, which I wrote for them for six years, they were foreign, they were based in France. Their headquarters was in France. Now, of course, Hachette has since sold their company, but at the time I worked for them, they were based in France. And the French well, are always so lucky for me. <laughs> and God bless the French. Lingerie, perfume, champagne, ported chocolates, gorgeous cuisine, fashion. We love, we love France. So, anyway, so you see what I'm saying? You, you've got a good year ahead. Oh boy, do you. Now Virgo, you have Jupiter 
in your house of marriage. This is great. If you marry this year, this is great, but you don't have to use it for that. Let's say you say I'm already married. Well, then your husband or wife does really well and you both have options you've never had before. You could travel or you could buy a house or maybe you could have that second baby you've wanted. Whatever it is, working together with someone else is, is where the golden nuggets lie. Now, later, after May 10th, it goes into your house of money. It's money that is performance-based, commission, royalty, and cash advance, bonus, something outside of salary, um, a court case that is decided in your favor, or um, or <laughs> you go on a TV game show and you, you go on Jeopardy and you win thousands of dollars. You know, it's outside of salary, okay? All right, Virgo, you're good with communication. And you read all the time. Maybe you should go on Jeopardy or one of those shows. <laughs> Next is Libra. Libra, you're going to get gorgeous assignments this year. If you work for other people, everybody in the department is going to say, "What? why does she get the best ones? Why does he get it? Well, he's earned it. And you've earned it. And if you are self-employed and have to hire people, Small businesses say their number one problem is getting people to work for them, finding qualified people and being able to afford them. Libra, you're not gonna have that problem. You're gonna find gems who make you your company look great. So it's all the time. It's also your health is gonna be fabulous. I have found when Jupiter's in the sixth house, and I know it makes no sense because Jupiter usually expands whatever it touches. Every time I've seen this, you lose weight. Now, not everybody wants to lose weight, but if you'd like to lose a few pounds, start right away. <laughs> no reason to wait. Just start eating non-processed food. That's all. Just say to yourself, no potato chips, no ring of dings. <laughs> Everything has to be out of the garden, you know real and uh but you can eat potatoes and things like that I don't, you know for years i wouldn't let myself eat potatoes it's crazy it fills you up and you don't crave other things so you're going to to lose weight get fit have beautiful assignments and then the marriage aspects kick in in the middle of the year and then um and then it comes back in November, December to the health and the work. But you're going to find it a smoother year. So it's good. Scorpio, you kind of won the jackpot. You have to focus on your personal life. You're such a hard worker. And you're constantly worried about getting to the top of the ladder or the top of the pyramid of your work. This year, it's you, you've set up enough momentum. This is the best year for love that you've seen in over a decade. Now, the same house of love is the house of baby. And my number one question is, can I have a baby? I'm 38, I'm 39, I'm 40. Well, you have the best chance. I say to all women listening, if you're in your 20s or early 30s, have your eggs frozen. Both my daughters did it. So one of my friends said, doesn't that hurt? I said, let me check. I'll call up the girls. Chrissy said, no, and that's the easiest part of the process that puts you to sleep and they won't even let you go home by yourself. They want your friend to pick you up. I said, Diana, what, did it hurt? She said, no, not at all. Why are you asking me that? <laughs> well, I, I'm asking for a friend. So the media is not telling you to freeze your eggs, but you should freeze your eggs because it gives you extra time to find the one you want to marry. Okay. Both my children needed in vitro. Both my children froze their eggs. It's a good thing. Now you do have to rent the place where you put the eggs, but it's like 500 a year. Most people can afford it. And if you can't, your parents want grandchildren. <laughs> so probably kick in. I, I bet, you know, every grandparent, you know, my daughter said, I read in the newspaper, the thing that a grandparent wants the most is grandchildren. 
I said, that's right. <laughs> More babies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, it's a wonderful year for love and fun. If you're married, you'll have more time together. If you want another child, you can maybe, I mean, see a fertility expert, but this is your best shot. And the first four months are so critical. March is beyond wonderful. The beginning of March, near that fifth, March 5th. Um, also, uh, your creativity will blossom like a big hibiscus flower, as big as a dinner plate. I mean, you're just blossoming. Sagittarius, this is your year for real estate. If you want to move, renovate, repair, I think if you want to move, you will find a big apartment or house with a view that's very sunny because Jupiter brings sun. You know, when my, my older daughter was looking for an apartment after college, she had this apartment that was way too small. She wanted to rent. She said, come down. All my friends are going to be there. And the four of us are going to rent this apartment together. And so I was trying not to say anything. And her friend Hillary's father was on, on the way. He was coming. I thought, let him say this place is too small. I don't want to be the bad guy. So he comes down and he says, I think this is an adventure. I said, adventure, this is a nightmare. These kids are gonna be at each other's throats. This is way too small. This is not appropriate. And it's a brand new building. I go down to the doorman and the doorman, I said, do you have any other apartments? He said, well, it's a new building. Why don't you ask the, the um, landlord? He's getting into his Lamborghini across the street. Lamborghini? He's, he's getting rich on the backs of these kids who are paying way too much rent for too little space. Well, after I said it was a nightmare, the kids started fighting with each other and Chrissy couldn't get them together to rent the house. So now she was mad at me. And I said, no, but you have Jupiter in the fourth house. You shouldn't settle. And if you're Sagittarius, you shouldn't settle. She said, mommy, I want to live in Manhattan. And astrology doesn't work in Manhattan. <laughs> Yeah, it works everywhere, everywhere. Two months later, she found a duplex on the Lower East Side where she wanted to live. Each girl got a great big bedroom. There was a spiral staircase in the living room, a large communal space living room. Each girl had a bedroom, two bedrooms on the, on the living room floor, two bedrooms up the staircase, and it had an elevator. She said, hmm, and it had a view of Lower Manhattan and a Statue of Liberty, and it was beautiful, very sunny. Do not settle. I'm telling you, when you have Jupiter in a certain part of the chart, go for the gold. Next sign is Capricorn. Capricorn, you did well financially last year. Very good. Now, this year, it's all about communication. You may start a podcast. You might have an idea for an app and hire a team. You might want to write a book. You might want to write a column for a, a publication you admire. Um, the ancients thought that communication was so important that they gave an entire slice of the pizza pie, which is a horoscope, to communication. It was just as important, equally as important as marriage, love, health, money, career, fame, you know, it was just as important. So this is your year to do that. In the middle of the year, from the middle of May to the end of October, that's when you can move and get the aspects that your friends who are Sagittarius have. Oh, by the way, Sagittarius, the middle of the year is unbelievable for love and baby. You know, it's so funny, I was talking to a girl and uh, she, she had gotten married last year. I didn't know her, but we were talking on the phone. We were doing business together. And I said, um, do you wanna have children? She said, yeah. I was thinking in two years, but I said, you're gonna have the good aspects in 22. She was a Sag. I said, I think the baby's coming whether you're ready or not. I think you should, Think sooner rather than later. I said, if I had a dollar for every girl that was crying on the phone saying, you know, the IVF is not working and it's $25,000 a shot. 
you know, and uh, of course I help my children with that. You know, you have to help. They can't afford that. Insurance doesn't pay. Although some insurance does. A lot of it doesn't, you know, it depends on the company. But, um, you know, Sedge, you're going to have a wonderful year. First the house, you build your nest, and then you have love. Capricorn, you're going to find the house after Mother's Day until Halloween. Okay, try to remember that. And then there's another stretch in December, but I think most people move in the summer when there's no snow. <laughs> so, of course, you're in LA. You never have snow, but the rest of us do. <laughs> Aquarius, you are committing to something serious. You may have done it already last year, like to start your own business or get married or have a, your first child or uh, buy a house or something big that you can't undo later. Something um, that will give structure to your life. And it's pretty exciting. And this year you're going to make more money than you've ever seen in your life, but it's not coming through performance space the way the Leos have and the Virgos. The Virgos are going to have that too, really good money. And, and the Virgos particularly have been beat up in recent years with strange expenses, things they didn't expect. It was actually unfair. It was coming out of left field all the time. Their nerves were shot. That's not going to happen this year. You're going to have money. Well, Aquarius, everything you did in 21 is going to start paying off. And I've already done Pisces. Pisces, you deserve this because you're always looking after other people like the Cancers are. Yeah. And uh, this yeah. is your year. That's awesome. Wow, that was so in-depth. I know everybody <laughs> got a lot out of it. And I was sitting here. Every sign you mentioned, I would think about who I know so I could track that. See, that's uh, so nice. You're cancer. You're so giving. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, who do I know that I can deliver some good news to them? That's so nice. Yeah. It made me, it made me excited to hear this for people at large because people need it. And then, Oh, yeah. Life is such a gift. And we have to use every minute we're given, you know, to, to find happiness, to be productive, to help others. Yeah, you know. So well, we're at the end, Susan. Oh, Thank okay. You. And I have one last quick question for you because I was a little obsessed. Just some backstory. I once went to a Louis Vuitton exhibit, and after seeing that and understanding the craftsmanship that goes into their clothing and their shoes, and and and, I was beyond. And their, and their trunks and, and yes. Purses. Oh. And then I found out that you designed a trunk. A window. A window. A window. No, well, Can you tell me about the opportunity? That is very grand. You know, you pray for these kind of surprises. Mm. It was like a shining meteorite coming out of the sky. Uh, my agent called me up and she said, Louis Vuitton is celebrating 200, the 200th anniversary of uh, the birth of Louis Vuitton. And they would like you to help fill in some of the information they don't have on Mr. Vuitton. I said, you're kidding. Where are they based? In Paris. I'm like, oh. So they'll be calling you. Do you mind doing his chart? I said, I'd be thrilled. Do they know the time of birth? Yes. But so little is known of him that they would like you to flesh out his personality. And would you also read it for the press? I said, of course. And they would like you, they've asked 200 visionaries. I mean, bless their hearts. They call me one. I mean, wow. I mean, whew, my heart is beating outside my chest like Bugs Bunny. You know, it's coming in and out. <laughs> and I can't believe they chose me. They said, no, we're all reading you. And um, I, I described him. See, now his, his background is very interesting. He left home early. First, he learned carpentry to learn how to make the trunks. He started with the trunks. Then he went to a leather tannery, big company, and learned all about leather. Now, in the olden days, 200 years ago, the trunks were curved. If you go to Ellis Island or any historical place and look at the old trunks, they're all curved. And I said, yeah, why, why is that? They couldn't stack them because they were curved. 
And they said, well, the water would roll down because they didn't know how to waterproof leather. But Mr. Vuitton, learning how to make the trunk, learning about leather, he figured out a way to make it waterproof. He also went to packing school. You see, what is that? Well, in those days, the women, he knew that the, he was going to build very quality items and that the only people that could afford them were the people who would go on these grand ships and bring their ball gowns and they'd have to be packed beautifully in the trunk. So he learned how to do that. Now he had the moon in Libra. He's a Leo, was a Leo. His son was in the house of money. So we knew that he would do well. He had Venus in Virgo making him very um, meticulous. He had yes. cancer rising. And uh, the more I read his chart, the more I liked him. Mm -hmm. I just, I, it was just such a privilege to, you know, when, when you read a chart, or at least me, I have to keep going back. And my normal chart readings are two hours. <sighs> and then it's still not enough. I need feedback. I need to go back to the person. And you, you see little intricacies that you didn't see the first time. And they, it was so exciting. So they said to me, we're giving these 200 people, you included, these artists and visionaries, a trunk. They didn't give it to me. I mean, what would you put in the trunk? And we will have our creative lab in London help you. I said, I'd like to put the solar system in the trunk with sparkling stars. Is that scary for you? They said, no, not at all. And I sent them chalk models. I had found this box of chalk, I think meant for children, to teach them what each planet looked like and the colors and they were all metallic. And they were for, you know, rubbing on the sidewalk. But it said Jupiter, Pluto, it said all the names. So I sent them a FedEx of that. I also sent them stock photography. I said, we don't have to have Venus be like a pile of sand because she technically is. I think we can tint her pink. We have a little creative license here. And they said, okay, sure, we're with you. And we, we built this beautiful image. And, uh, oh gosh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna wait for this call to go away. My editor always calls me when I'm on Zoom. <laughs> Every and while I'm we're waiting, I'm just going to, because we are here at the end, I'm going to give out again your URL so people know here they I can am. find you at astrologyzone.com and also on Twitter, go to astrologyzone. And I just want to remind and on people. On Instagram. Yeah. That, it's, yes, on Instagram. Also, but Susan okay. asked for some feedback. I love this. This is opening up a whole I, door I when you get there. I, I, for grief. Uh, you and I should talk and you tell me what your readers say. But by the way, of the window that I I put together with the Creative Lab together, it ran in 400 stores around the world. This trunk my, did. It was in August. Oh. It was so special. I'm and so happy the call for came you. in during that period that Jupiter was in Pisces. So I'm looking forward to what's coming. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> But if anybody has any thoughts about dealing with grief yes. and what's worked for them, uh, I would like to know. You know, we read every letter that comes into uh, AZ Press at astrologyzone.com, but they might write to you, Debbie, and uh, that could be a whole other show because mm -hmm. COVID has taken the lives of so many of our loved ones, of our friends that I think I have to begin to address a subject that's always been too tender for me to touch. And I would like to know what people are thinking. Okay. I promise I will forward anything I receive. So folks, if you want to write to me, feel free. I will get everything over to Susan. And Susan, once again, thank you for an amazing show. Thank you. <laughs> so thank great you to so hang much. out with you. <laughs> we'll and talk again. Thank Yay you. to next year. I'm very excited about what's to come. And I end today's show with this quote from JP Morgan. Anyone can be a millionaire, but to become a billionaire, you need an astrologer. 
Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream. And next week, my guest is Carolyn Corey, an award-winning filmmaker and author of best-selling books on consciousness science and energy medicine. Caroline has numerous UFO encounters as well as ESP and precognition experiences. She founded Omnium Media, an entertainment platform, and Caroline is a regular guest at conferences and TV shows, including The Unexplained with William Shatner, as well as History Channel's popular series, Ancient Aliens. Thank you so much for joining us today. Dare to dream and have a great, amazing year. Relish every moment you deserve it.